Hello everyone, this is uh, Professor Hans Hasselmann at MJC, and in today's discussion we're going to be talking about uh, the, the topic of uh, gender and sexual orientation in our beginnings of our uh, discussions on deconstructing gender and reconstructing community. So one of the things that uh, we should definitely talk about is some of the terms and some of the usages that we, we have when we, we're, we're talking about the LGBTQ community in general, just to clarify some ideas. Uh, so when we start talking about gender and um, sexual orientation, uh, we can kind of clarify the difference between the two. So one way that we usually do this is we look at the LGBTQ umbrella. So there's no such thing as an LGBTQ person lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer are all different labels representing different identities. Some individuals identify with a couple of those labels, for example, gay and transgender, or even several, for example, lesbian, gay, queer, and transgender. <clears throat> so it's important when we talk about these, uh, these terms, gender and sexual orientation, that we realize that some people cross the line between what is a sexuality or an orientation and what is a, uh, a gender. Now, on the left side of our umbrella, we have our LGB section, and they all represent sexual identities. And the T side represents gen a gender identity, as well as an umbrella term for many gender identities. Now, notice the difference here. On one side, we have sexualities, and on the other, we have genders. And we'll go into a little more detail of the difference between sexualities and gender in this discussion. Now, the term queer means different things to different people. For some, it describes sexuality. For others, the gender. And for others, it might express both. Sexual identities or sexual orientations are ways to categorize and define who we are attracted to romantically, sexually, or otherwise. Gender identities are ways to categorize and define genders. So let's take a, a closer look at what gender really is. And I have this funny little infographic here to kind of show uh, our typical view of gender. We have our men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Um, and this fun little picture says, where people who can't be adequately classified using a contrived binary taxonomy are from. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about gender the gender binary, and the fact that really this doesn't uh, quite exist. So before we go on to the next section, take, I want you to pause for a minute and um, write down what you think gender is, your definition of gender. Maybe when you discovered you had a gender or when you knew that if you have children, when they had a gender. So go ahead and pause and we'll come back and we'll talk about um, the, what these terms mean. So what is gender? Well, gender, traditionally, we use the word gender uh, to simply mean either man or woman. Um, and we usually refer to this as the gend or bi gender binary, which means we just have two options. You're a man, she's a woman, and you must fit into those two boxes. However, the way we experience gender is a lot more complex and in fact is actually non-binary. And we can usually look at this, this, uh, this non-binary complexity on a scale from man to woman and somewhere in between. Um, and we usually call someone in between either genderqueer or bigender, which we'll be going over more of these terms later in this course. But it's actually more nuanced than that. It's not just uh, this or that. So let's take a look at how gender can be broken up. So first, uh, we can look at uh, gender identity. So gender identity is how you, in your own head, define and understand your gender based on the options for gender you know to exist. So in other words, if you were given the two options of male or female, you may choose to identify with one or the other and not have any idea of anything different. Now, identity consists of aspects of manness and womanness. Um, norms or social expectations and roles uh, are often placed upon men and women in society. Now, typical norms of manness, strong-willed, logical, athletic, a leader, a builder, and a protector, 
are seen quite often in the gender binary. Typical norms for womenness include being empathetic, being sensitive, and caring. Uh, often someone who is a woman is a teacher or caretaker or a supporter. However, some may identify with both aspects. You may have a strong-willed teacher, for example, that is a woman, and they may not fit necessarily into these two binaries. Now, another form of gender or expression is called gender expression. And this is the ways in which you demonstrate gender through your dress, your actions, and your demeanor. Uh, aspects of masculinity and femininity are, femininity are often displayed in clothing, grooming, speech, actions, demeanor, and a lot of others. Examples of masculine dress might include baggy pants or shirts, un, uh, you know, unironed, or very functional, and examples of feminine dress might be form-fitting and colorful and frivolous. Now, you can probably think of lots of other ways that uh, men and women express themselves with using their gender. However, people who may not fit on one end of the spectrum, we may consider them as androgynous, where your gender expression expresses both masculinity and femininity. So that's what gender is. Now, a, a middle piece of what everything, when we put us all together, is the idea of biology. So our biological sex are the physical parts of your body that we think of as either male or female. Examples of maleness include the penis, testicles, coarse body hair, wide shoulders. And examples of femaleness include a vagina, ovaries, breasts, wide hips. Now what's important to note here is that those aspects of your biological sex don't always determine your identity. Now, if, like I said earlier, if you have been raised in an environment where you have one or the other, then you would probably associate penis with male, vagina with women. But if you know of any people who are intersex or transgender, the, bio the biology may become a very different aspect of how you identify yourself. Finally, we have this idea of sexual orientation or sexuality in gender, or in, in general. And this is important to note because when we talk about gender uh, identity and sexual orientation, they're two very different things. They can do. They can look at. You can be attracted to someone either because of their identity or expression, or because of their biological sex. And here's uh, some differences of what what we mean by this. So one form of sexual orientation is uh, romantic attraction. And this is what makes people desire romantic contact or interaction with another person or persons, wanting to go on dates, having intimate conversations, um, etc. So this may be you, you might be romantically attracted to someone of your own sex or romantically attracted to someone of the opposite sex, but the idea is it's purely romantic. Another form of attraction is sexual attraction. This is attraction that makes people desire sexual contact or show sexual interest in another person. Now, what do we call someone who's not romantically or sexually attracted to anyone? Um, this, we would refer to these people as asexual, someone who does not experience sexual attraction towards individuals of any gender. Uh, and this is different from celibacy, which is a choice to refrain from engaging in sexual behavior. So when we're looking at these two ideas of orientation and gender and identity, it's important that we don't put these together as one. Your sexual orientation and your gender do not always match. And that's something that we'll be talking about more in this course, especially as we talk about um, different terms. So this is the end of the discussion on uh, gender, uh, gender identity and sexual orientation. Um, as you go through the rest of the, uh, the modules, uh, be sure to keep these in mind, uh, especially when you start learning about uh, the, um, the, the spectrums that are talked about later in this course and how a person is made up of all these separate pieces and not necessarily um, one single entity.